Hey everyone, welcome to the latest installment of Phoenix Children's Live. I'm your host, Peter Balistrieri, and it is 110 degrees out here today. Uh, we are going to be talking about water safety and drowning awareness, and uh, today with me is Senior Injury Prevention Specialist Tiffany Isaacson. Thank you for coming today. Thanks for having me. We all, we all know you as the water safety lady, right? Yes, that's what I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, we went on uh, location here. We're poolside. Um, as you can see, the pool behind us. Uh, I'd love to be in that pool right now, but we're going to do this uh, sitting right here and answering all your questions. Please give us questions while we're doing this segment. Uh, it'll be great. Also, I just want to say thank you to the people that are behind the camera today because it's hot. We have Jenny Hagel and Zankar and, and Michael Halen, Zankar Patadio right there. So if you look up, uh, we have a branded tent today. So thanks for the foundation for bringing that. Michael, thank you. I appreciate that. Anytime. So, um, so the deal is today, so before we start, you know, we're live. So again, feel free to ask us questions. Um, we'll try to answer those during the broadcast. But um, um, if not, you know, you can put them in the comments below and we'll get to them uh, when we're done. And uh, if you like this hat, this is uh, courtesy of my colleague Stacy Dillier. Uh, this is the bucket hat, the PCH Phoenix Children's bucket hat. So nice uh, digs here for that. So I like it. You like that? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so we're talking drowning awareness today. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think the first question is when did um, Drowning Awareness Month actually become a thing? When, when did it actually begin? This is the 15th year of the Drowning Impact Awareness Month campaign. We started in 2004, uh, and it took off within a few years and became a statewide effort and has gotten bigger and bigger ever since. Okay, so it's been going on for a while, right? Yes, it has. Okay, so again, it's hot, it's 110 degrees, kids want to get in pools, and that's a big reason why we're doing this today, and we do it every year practically for this yep, stuff. Yep. So um, please, please, please pay attention to this. Um, so with that being said, when are the peak times for, for child drownings in, in uh, Arizona? Um, when it comes to water safety, my, my job is really, really interesting because we don't suffer from a lack of information about child drownings. You would think if we knew more about them, we could easily prevent them, but it's a complicated issue. And, and in fact, we know a lot about child drownings. They're actually quite predictable here in the Valley of the Sun, especially and in Tucson, hmm. um, June, July, and August are the top months in Arizona for child drownings. And that makes sense because it's 110. And we're melting. It's and right look in. how much we want to be in that swimming pool. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah. right, and kids are no different. Yeah. Um, so the summer months are really when we want to push the water safety awareness out in the community. We're really blessed in the Valley, especially because we start talking about water safety in March, April, and May. Mm -hmm. But what we get is a little bit of messaging fatigue. We're kind of tired of being reminded about water safety, and this is crunch time. Yeah. This is when it counts. We also know that most child drownings happen um, in the dinner hour, between 4 and 7 p.m. That's interesting. Often when families are either making food, eating food, or cleaning up food. Okay, so the, 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 the kids are done with their dinner, uh, the, the parents are being occupied, mm -hmm. uh, preoccupied, and they want to go outside and cool off at that point. Yeah, yeah, it's very common, and you can, you can put together the scenario that occurred in a drowning, sometimes from media clippings, and, what gets shared on TV, but the really good data comes from the Child Fatality Review Team mm -hmm. for Arizona, which looks at police reports and medical examiner reports. When we see those, we can see the circumstances of drownings, and then we can say to ourselves, you know, what should we do to help the average family prevent this from happening? Yeah. And what we also see is a peak in the weekends when okay. we use our pools more, and sadly, very predictably, summer holidays. Labor Day weekend is traditionally a really bad weekend for our local um, fire departments and doctors and nurses because chances are really good they're going to have to treat a child who may not survive a drowning. So August is probably that that one of those peak months that you were talking about. We see a higher uh, prevalence of it in August. Yeah, absolutely. And part of it is probably it's so unbearably hot. Not only is it 110 right now, but it's super humid. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, is a di bit different for Arizona. We usually get the dry heat, but yeah. it's uh, monsoon season, so you're yes. getting a little bit of that humidity or a Love lot of it. Love a monsoon right now. That would be great. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's also back to school. Yeah. And, and when you have kids in preschool on up, back to school, I say it really rocks your world. Yeah. Because suddenly they have to get up early, and so do you, and there's a blizzard of paperwork for parents. And everybody's adjusting to a new schedule and a new routine, and sometimes the kids are nervous, and the stress is just really high. Yeah. And 
and there are so many events that parents have to go to in the first couple weeks of school. You have to go to meet the teacher and you have to go to the sports orientations. And everybody's very tired mm -hmm. and very hot and we wind up out in the pool area when maybe we're not our best selves. So if you could quantify, how high is the risk for, for drowning for children in Arizona? Um, the risk for children in Arizona, when we compare it to the national average, is about double the national average. And, and so I think the, the, the weird thing about that is that it's almost kind of a, a, a I don't know, an oxymoron or something along those lines because it's, it's the desert, right? You always yes. feel it's, it's, it's dry, it's you know, cactus and everything like that, but then you have the, the incidence of drowning is, is double than what it is in the nation. So it's yes. almost like kind of that weird kind of factoid, if you will. Yeah, it's really true. I taught a water safety class on Monday night for seven pregnant women. Yeah. And they asked me, why do we have so many drownings? And it's, it's a place that's filled with sand and dust, and you wouldn't expect that to happen here. Right. But almost every backyard in Arizona has some kind of a swimming pool arrangement, or that family has somewhere where they go swimming. Mm -hmm. A community so, pool. Or yeah, yeah, or a friend's pool, your grandparents' oh, yeah. pool. Yeah. So you've got access to swimming pools, you've got super, super hot, long swimming season. We also have a really young population. We have a lot of one to four year olds in the state of Arizona, and one to four year olds make up about 85% of our deaths. That's what, that's what I was going to ask you next. That's the statistic that, that popped out to me when I was looking at that. That age group is the, is the, is the, the highest age group for, for risk. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Is that just because we're going back to they, they don't know all the rules, they just kind of want to do what they want to do, or you know, kind of what's, what's the deal with that age group there? Yes, yes, and yes. And you really, <laughs> you really hit the crux of the issue. And, and as, a, as a researcher and as a person who works in the community to keep children from drowning, 